those two offices as contemplated in the bill are outrightly unconstitutional. And therefore, this House cannot proceed, cannot proceed, should not really proceed uh, to process this bill in the manner it is currently crafted. And I would really be inviting you to make a ruling before we can proceed with this, with this, with this motion. But let me say this. First, on the issue of the head of public service, Honorable Speaker, the bill is attempting to establish the office of the head of public service, Honorable Speaker, outside the Constitution. When you read the Constitution at Article 1, Article 154, Article 154 of the Constitution establishes the office of the Secretary to the Cabinet with very clear functions and powers, Honorable Speaker. And I won't read them because they are clear. Members can read it for themselves. Article 154. As a matter of fact, if you allow me, 154, because I want to be mindful of time. 154, there is established the office of the Secretary of the Cabinet, which is an office in the public service. It goes on and on to to enumerate the functions of this office as one being in charge of the cabinet office, two being responsible for arranging the business and keeping the minutes of the cabinet, and three conveying the decisions of the cabinet to the appropriate persons or authorities, four to have other functions as directed by the cabinet. Honorable Speaker, if you go to the bill, what the bill is assigning this office is laughable. Wait, wait. And I'll be, I'll be asking Honorable Mbui to, be, to assist me for the time being. Let me listen to him. Which page is that? Uh, this bill, Honorable Speaker, is attempting to assign the, the proposed head of the public office to be the chief of staff of the president, to be the administrative head of the executive office of the president and previously to be the custodian of the seal, which I'm thinking now the committee has removed, okay, and so on and so forth, and to perform any such other functions as may be assigned by the president. Honorable Speaker, there is nothing in these functions as proposed in the bill that are not being performed by the secretary of the cabinet which is a constitutional office established under Article 154 of the Constitution. So in other words, this House is being invited to create, to create some kind of mongorel, to create some kind of office that will superintend over a constitutional office. Honorable Speaker, Honorable Speaker, we are being invited in broad daylight to establish an office through an act of parliament to load over a constitutional office under Article 154 of the Constitution, Honorable Speaker. That, to me, is outrightly unconstitutional. There is no other way you can keep it, Honorable Speaker. If you really want to establish such an office with distinct functions, then there is no shortcut. Just go to the Constitution and amend it. Amend the Constitution and remove powers from the Cabinet, from the Secretary of the Cabinet, and assign them to the office of the or, or head of public uh, service. But more importantly, Honorable Speaker, the head of public service is also going to attempt to perform functions that are only meant for the Public Service Commission. Public Service Commission, under Article 233 of the Constitution, Honorable Speaker. We are not even aware, I'm not even aware, because the bill is silent, is this office is this a state office or a public office? It's not even clear here. Because if it were a state office, it would be a different ball of Because there's no way you can establish a state office through an ordinary statute and stand to be corrected. You cannot. You cannot. And you cannot, and you cannot establish a public office which can only be done by the Public Service Commission and make it superior to a constitutional office. 
under Article 15 of the Constitution. That is my issue with that particular office. I want to go to the second office, the office of the Chief, Chief Administrative Secretary. Honorable Speaker, Article 152 of the Constitution is very clear. It is the article that establishes the cabinet, and the cabinet is, is, is clearly composed of the president, the deputy president, the attorney general, and who? And, and the cabinet secretaries. Okay? I give a specific number of cabinet secretaries. Honorable Speaker, the Constitution goes ahead at Article 155 and establishes the office of the principal secretary. Honorable Speaker, the architecture of the Constitution, if you read it logically, Honorable Speaker, you will see that from the cabinet secretary, the second in line is the principal secretary. With distinct functions, distinct functions. I want just to read for you one of the functions of the, cap of the principal secretary under Article 155. Article 155 of the Constitution. The, there is established the office of the principal secretary, which is an office in the public service. Which is an office in the public service. Honorable Speaker, I'm looking for the functions of the, of the cabinet of the principal secretary. Honorable Speaker, 155, yes. 155, no, my eyes are failing me. Okay. Okay. Add 155, sabbatical 2. Each state department shall be under the administration of a principal secretary. Under the administration of a principal secretary. The Constitution did not contemplate that at some point in time, a House of Parliament would sit and purport to establish another office outside the Constitution to be somewhere between the Cabinet Secretary and the Principal Secretary. And the Principal Secretary. There is nowhere. The Constitution, the drafters of the Constitution, could not have imagined that at some point in time a parliament would, would create an office outside the constitution. Would create an office, would create an office through a statute, an ordinary statute. Uh, uh, order. There's a point of order from. But I, have, but I am also. I'm also a point of order. Use the mic. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. May I draw the attention of my, majority, my minority leader to Article 132, sub-Article 4 of the Constitution of Kenya, which provides that the President may perform any other executive function provide, provided for in this Constitution or in a national legislation, national legislation, and except as otherwise provided for in this Constitution, may establish an office in the public service in accordance with the recommendations of the Public Service Commission. While is that it? May he address that particular point? That's the Constitution of Kenya. Thank you. And let me educate my good friend, the Honorable Karoli. The same Constitution, the same Constitution under Article 234, Sub-Article 3A, Okay? Just go to Article 234. Sabbatical 3A. And it says, it says clauses 1 and 2 shall not apply to any of the following offices in the public services. One is state offices. In other words, the Public Service Commission cannot establish a state office. If you go to this bill, the chief administrative secretary is characterized as a state office. Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker. I think he is now properly educated. Oh, Honorable Speaker. 
Honorable Speaker, there is no way, there is no way, an office. Wind up. Okay, I'm winding up. And I'm very happy that, Honorable Speaker, that you've, been given, you've given me this kind of opportunity to address I've, these issues. I've overindulged you. You've overindulged me. <laughs> Honorable Speaker, if you look at the functions of the Chief Admin Secretary in the bill, Honorable Mbui again help me. Okay. Very, very briefly. The functions of the Chief Admin Secretary. She, he, he or she shall be responsible for, among other things, uh, responding to issues relating to the portfolio assigned to the office, liaising, representing the cabinet secretary at any meeting, uh, performing any other duties assigned by the office of the, circuit, of the attorney general and the cabinet secretary. In other words, a plain reading of this bill tells you that the chief admin secretary will be responsible, shall be responsible to the cabinet secretary. In other words, he or she shall not be responsible to the principal secretary. So in short, you are creating this office above that of the principal secretary. He is essentially a deputy cabinet secretary. And you are creating this office outside the constitution. Mr. Honorable Speaker, this is an arena that we should be careful not to venture into. Because if we do so, we shall be setting ourselves as a house to very needless litigation. And you know the verdict, Honorable Speaker, without really preempting. These ones, if it goes to any court, will be declared unconstitutional. So why should we waste time? Why must we waste taxpayers' time deliberating on these issues which are very clearly unconstitutional? Therefore, I want to plead with you, I want to ask you, ask you Honorable Speaker, that you discontinue this debate and retreat to make a considered ruling on the issues I have raised before the processing of this mo uh, motion or bill can proceed yes, one way or the other. With those preliminary remarks, I rest my case. Thank you. Thank you very much, Honorable Speaker. Again, there's a misconception here. If you look at Article 234, it took me a bit of time to get it. The powers of the public service, the disciplinary powers of the public service, the power to hire, fire, and discipline, are what are restricted in terms of how they exercise those powers in relation to state officers. Because there are special procedures for state officers when you exercise those powers as a public service. And I can give him an example. I was the first chief of staff in the Republic of Kenya. When we created that office, there was no power but the president had the power, executive power, to organize his executive office. So did the prime minister. So there are offices in a presidential system of government that are created not necessarily by law. If you check the history of chief of staff in the United States, the first holder was a presidential appointee by executive order. And over time, it has gained currency. Simply because in a presidential system such as the one we have, there are officers that cannot exercise both uh, what you call bureaucratic power as well as political power. A permanent secretary cannot interface in a presidential system with parliament. So in a presidential system such as the one in the United States, the presidents have their chiefs of staff who can exercise both bureaucratic power as well as executive power in, and interface politically with Congress. And that power is rested in the president. And what he's quoting under Article 234 limit the authority of public service in terms of hiring, disciplining, uh, and directing the state officers. But it does not extend, it does not limit the power of the president under Article 132 to establish offices in the executive as he so wishes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Morogara, Morogara hold, Jared Okello, yes. on the same issue. Morogara. You are the chair of the committee. Hold. I'll come back to you. Uh, Honorable Speaker. Hold your horses, Mugara. Honorable Speaker, I, even as I align myself with the sentiments as expressed by my brother, Honorable Wandai, I did read the ruling by the High Court on this same matter, Honorable Speaker, with a tooth comb. 
because I needed to understand the gist of this entire issue. And one thing that caught my attention, honorable speaker, is what the court said, that we are being governed by a constitutional dispensation of the year 2010. And this constitution went into details as highlighting these offices, some of which are now under question. And one fundamental issue that these judges raised is that the position of cabinet secretaries, chief cabinet uh, secretary, chief administrative secretary, was going to be a person just between the cabinet secretary and the principal secretary. So by inference, chief administrative secretary is a boss to a principal secretary. And honorable speaker, what the court said that we are still not addressing holistically is that if Kenyans thought that that office was going to be as important as this house would want to make it, the Kenyans would have put it into law in the Constitution. And the court went on to say that if indeed this position will be as important, Kenyans will have to have a say on it by way of a referendum, honorable speaker. Why is Straddle a very important consideration in enactment of these offices, Honorable Speaker. So even as you retreat to come up with an in-depth ruling, as you have always done before, let us try to look at the participation of Kenyans as infusing this office into law, Honorable Speaker. Otherwise, we were so embarrassed as a house by the decision of, this court, of our courts and I don't want this house to be always subjected to another round of embarrassment each time we create laws here. Honorable Speaker, we don't make laws in, uh, in vain. Uh, and therefore, let us go deep and look into this. I know there are people who are angling for jobs. Those who campaigned for Ruda or Kenya Kwanza by extension. And they are so desperate to have something in their name. But let us do things according to the dictates of our laws and not overreach and hence face embarrassment in our courts of law, Honorable Speaker. I thank you for the opportunity.